Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia, and I am the program manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. I will be sharing session resources with you in the chat. But before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items, our code of conduct and event guidelines. First, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. And secondly, our event guidelines. This session is being recorded and will be available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will share the link in the chat for our channel. And if you have not been on a live stream through YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, feel free to reach out to us through social media or on our website. Which brings us to today's session. Today is the first session of the Building Intelligent.net apps with Azure OpenAI series. I'm gonna bring in our speakers here for today, Luis and Danielle. Hello, how are you both? Hello, Alexia. Thank you very much for this uh, great uh, introduction. Hi, Danielle, how are you doing? Hey, hi everyone. It's a whole pleasure to be able to be here. I'm so happy to explore the generative AI world and, you know, have a nice time in community to exchange knowledge between each other. You said it, yes. Uh, so this uh, series is about uh, the possibilities that Azure OpenAI brings to developers. So uh, expect several sessions with a lot of uh, demos, a lot of code uh, with our great uh, speakers. So the idea is that, well, uh, Azure OpenAI is part of the generative artificial intelligence. So we will see how we can uh, create useful content uh, like code, images, text in our applications uh, in order to produce, yeah, great, great uh, software. So we will discuss this during the next uh, four weeks. And today, well, we have our first uh, speaker, who is uh, Daniel Gomez. So can you uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm Daniel from, I'm from Colombia. Actually, I live in Ecuador. I'm Microsoft MVP in AI and developer technologies. Also, I have the opportunity to be lead in the Azure Tech Groups uh, in a community called Virtual Dev Show for virtual events for the community. I work as a software engineer and as a developer advocate. So this is a general overview about me. Okay, thank you, Daniel. And well, my name is Luis Beltran. I am also a Microsoft uh, MVP in uh, Azure Artificial Intelligence and also uh, developer technologies. Uh, I am from Mexico, though I am living in Czech Republic because, well, I am uh, studying there, doing research. Um, and well, yeah, I uh, like a lot uh, uh, talking about uh, .NET MAUI, about Xamarin, um, and also Azure. So you can find me at uh, events where uh, these technologies are the, the, the main focus. And yeah, I will be hosting this uh, series along with the Microsoft Reactor team, uh, Alexia, Bruno, and whoever joins us. Um, so, yeah, thank you everyone who is uh, attending today's uh, session. So we, we are glad that you are here. Um, so um, if you want, uh, Daniel, we can uh, get started. Okay, you just give me one, one second. Uh, don't forget to uh, join the, the, the link uh, that you will find uh, in, the, in, the, in the comments. Uh, we also have um, uh, Microsoft Learn uh, collection, so you can learn about this uh, technology, building intelligent.net apps with Azure OpenAI. So there are about uh, three uh, modules per uh, session where you can get about uh, fundamentals, get started with Azure OpenAI and also responsible uh, generative uh, AI. So yeah, you, you will find useful content so you can also uh, increase your knowledge. Okay, so Daniel, 
uh, the stage is yours. Uh, good luck. If you need anything from me, I will be here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. And yeah, you are ready to get started. Awesome. Okay, to start this a series of learning about generative AI. Uh, in this session, we will start talking about getting started with Azure Open AI service. In this case, to explore the generative AI tools and functionalities that we can consider, and also how to start with the Azure Open AI service as a result. Okay. It's about me. Uh, I'm happy to be here. And to start, it's important to talk about artificial intelligence in general. Yeah. When we talk about artificial intelligence, we can consider, for example, the thing to simulate the human behavior to create new solutions. Under this area of the general artificial intelligence, we can consider the machine learning to have techniques or models to learn from data and have predictive systems. Then if we can consider a deeper le level, we can have the deep learning, for example, to when we have interactions with systems like uh, Siri, Alexa, to have that types of interactions. And under all of that, we can consider the generative AI. The generative AI uh, the, uh, the general idea is create new content from the entry or prompt. Yep. And in this case, probably you already interact with some tools like ChatGPT, for example. And the idea is, in this case, we can have uh, interactions by text. For example, in this case, uh, doing some questions and getting an, 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 an as a result. Also, we can consider an image, for example, when we say, hey, a person in front of, of a computer enjoying an amazing Microsoft Reactor event. We can have our results like this. So uh, it's important to start talking about, OK, generative AI is amazing. What are the, what are the things that generative AI-based models can, can do it? So in this case, for example, we can see that, OK, we can create new text, images, and codes, for example, and generate uh, content like a human-like uh, outputs, also provide information and create new amazing content with this type of interaction. But it's also, also important to consider, OK, the generative AI models are not. In this case, is a smart uh, way because in this case, these generative AI models is just a predictive systems to, okay, generate a content from an entry. Also deterministic uh, because everything in this case is based on probabilities and is not 100% reliable. Because in this case, the most important thing is as a predictive system, generate new content from the previous data. Also, uh, the generative AI, AI models cannot understand language, for example, because in this case it's just up as a predictive system or under, understand facts and real, realities. Because in this case, um, again, the thing is generate new content from the previous data. So it depends on that. Also understand manners, emotions, or any things, in this case, uh, it's important to consider additional process or additional tools to have uh, better content or have a, like a filters to get good results. For example, content safety resources to get uh, good images and good text results, for example. And be aware of what they answer. Again, the thing is generate new content. So in this case, there are many, 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 many models that we can consider in this world. But in this case, it's important to have in mind three of them. The first one, for example, GPT-4 to text generator in natural language. We can consider some tools like Bing Chat or Bing Chat Enterprise to have this type of interaction. Also DALI, for example, to image generator and codecs to generate new code. 
So in this case, it's important to learn how to use these tools, but it's, imp but it's also important to learn how to create new solutions from them. So in this case, and to achieve that goal, we can consider the Azure AI services. The Azure AI services in a general way allows you to create or implement the human side in our applications, because in this case, we can contemplate resources like, uh, okay, we have an image and we can classify it or a, a detect objects in the image or have, for example, language translator, a classify images, voice recognition, and also generate new content. And Microsoft provides these functionalities through Azure. Okay, and the most important resource here that we can consider is the Azure OpenAI service. And it's important to, to mention the beginning of, of all of this. So in this case, we have the, the join or the collaboration between OpenAI and Microsoft. OpenAI, uh, in its part, the idea is um, have all the research about the artificial general intelligence to create new solutions. And of course, we have Microsoft with all uh, infrastructure, and all the technologies that we can use. And in this case, uh, in the case of Azure, we, we, we have the Azure OpenAI service is part of the Azure AI services to work with generative AI models. And in this case, we can consider, for example, GPT-3.5 and GPT-4 to work with text or chat GPT for conversation, codex, and DALI, of course, to generate images. So there are many scenarios that we can consider. For example, if we have a prompt or an entry and we say, uh, write a slogan for an ice cream shop and get the response. We offer smiles with every spoonful. That's amazing, right? Also, we can have other scenarios. For example, I'm having trouble turning on my Xbox and we can have the response. Hey, try a few things. You can try to fix this problem. Yeah. Also, we can have technical context. For, for example, if we have a SQL table, with these specific attributes, for example, uh, custom, customer ID, first name, last name, and all of them attributes, we can say something like, hey, create an SQL query for all clients uh, in this particular city with this specific name, and generate the response, in this case, the SQL um, query. Also with images, for example, we can say, hey, a fireball with vibrant colors to show the speed of the innovation in our media company and generate the, the logo. So we can consider all of these scenarios with Azure OpenAI service. And that's the idea right now. Explore the Azure OpenAI service in the Azure portal. So uh, in this moment, I'm going to share uh another window to show you all the process okay in the meantime don't forget to prepare your questions for our speakers uh, the the questions will be answered at the end okay so yeah thank you Valerie. okay we have the azure portal here as you can see here uh and the idea is, OK, start with the Azure OpenAI service. We can go to the search part and find this option, Azure OpenAI. And here, like another resource inside the Azure, uh, we, can, we can create a new one or select an, an specific one or go to other resources or other related resources. For example, the Azure AI services. We can have here the cognitive search, computer vision, face API, custom vision, and the other resources in this category, in the Azure AI service. So the idea for today is create a new one. Uh, and if you are doing this for the first time, the first thing, OK, is select the subscription and then the resource group. 
But for this specific resource, we need to apply to access to, to this resource in a form. So in this case, for example, here we can see the link to request the access to this Azure OpenAI service. In a general way, the idea is um, fill your general information like first name, last name, also your subscription ID in this particular case for the subscription that you want to work and then provide the, the subscription ID. You, you can get the instructions uh, about how to get the subscription ID here and another information about your company and the models that you want to, to access. For example, text and code models, DALI or OpenAI which, uh, whisper model as well. Yes, basically mm -hmm. as part of the responsible, uh, mm -hmm. let's say usage of this technology, you uh, let's say describe to Microsoft why you want to use this uh, technology with, for which kind of project and yeah they will uh, decide whether to give you access or no but yeah that it's uh, mainly mm -hmm. because of that that's why it is not let's say open at all for you, you mm -hmm. need like to say why do you want to use this service okay yep but the thing is today, this is open to everyone to access to the resource. And this is important to consider to, to be able to create the resource. Okay, if we already have the access, for example, I'm going to select this other subscription, then we need to select, okay, the resource, resource group. For example, I have this one, demos. Then the instance details, for example, in this case, the region, uh, wow. You already have many regions that we can consider here, as you can see here, as you can see in this part. Now we need to put the name, for example, Open AI Reactor. Ah, this name is available. And now the pricing tier. In this case, the only option is a standard right now, but if we want to to see the detail of the pricing, we can go to the documentation through this link and here we can see, okay, this is in Spanish. I'm going to change to English. Uh, the general pricing, as you can see here. Uh, for example, with image models, with DALI, for example, per uh, 100 images, the, this will be the cost, the, the general price. And you can see uh, the same thing for the other models. And that's it. We can consider other options, but that's all the, the general things that we can consider in this case. Uh, okay, now we can create a resource. And that's it. I already have another resource here, according to the time, for example, uh, this one. And here we can, we can see the general overview of the resource. There are many options that we can see here, but the most important thing, I think, is this part, case and endpoint. Because in the future, you, if you want to implement or use generative AR models in your applications, you will use this like an endpoint or a, as an API. So you will see here the endpoints, and also the keys for this specific resource. And that's it. In the overview, for example, we can see this option. Go to the Azure OpenAI Studio. And the idea here is access to like a low code environment to interact with the generative AI models and have these uh, functionalities. Um, we can set up this environment. I'm going to change this to English. And that's it. Okay. Here we can see, welcome to the Azure OpenAI service. This is the general portal. And we uh, can have here some uh, scenarios, for example, a shared playground, competitions playground, interactions with DALI, or if we need to provide our own data to customize some models. 
So the first thing that we can explore is, for example, with the DALI model in this section. Yeah, the idea here is, for example, generate new images, and we can have here like the prompt to enter, and then the results. For example, we can say something like uh, genera, generate uh, a beautiful picture of mm, Mexico, for example. to generate the image. Hmm. As you can see here, this is the result. Uh, we can consider some options, for example, copy the prompt or generate a new one, and, uh, download this, this particular image or delete that. Huh. This look amazing. Uh, and other option is, for example, show the code. If you want to call uh, the DALI uh, model from Python, for example, this is the option right now. You can consider this code, for example, to integrate your application. And you, you, you will have here the endpoint and the key to put in this part to be able to call this uh, particular model as an API. Yep, and that's it for DALI. And what happened now if we want to interact with uh, text by chat, for example? Uh, in this part, in the options, we have the deployments options. And the idea here is to specify, hey, I would like to work with a specific uh, generative AI model. In this case, for example, we can go to this option, create a new deployment and select the model that we want to work. For example, here we can have the GPT 3.5, GPT 4, uh, these type of models. If we select one of them, then we need to, to specify the deployment name. But you already have that set up. As you can see here, for example, uh, one example is for GPT 4, and this uh, other example is for this other uh, model. With this complete, we can go to this option, chat. And in the chat playground, we will have some options and sections to interact uh, with the model as a chat. As a first point, the assistant setup. Here we can say something like the prompt of the system. Uh, in this case, for example, hey, all the interaction will be with the assistant and the help people find information. This is a general, a general context. Then we can have this other section to have this the chat session to, you know, create questions, get content. And this other part is for the configuration. For example, here the deployment, we can select, hey, we, will, we would like to work with this particular model and select some parameters, for example, the max, max response according to the tokens. If we want, for example, to limit uh, 100 words per response, we can set up uh, that here. Also the temperature, for example, to say, hey, uh, the interaction with the model will be, or will get uh, creative responses or pressive re responses according to the temperature value. And that's it in a general way that, it, that we can consider here. For example, um, in this general scenario, we can say, hey, you are an AI assistant that help people find information. So to start, we can say something like, hey, to see that everything is working fine. Hello, how can I help you today? OK, for example, we can say, um, what is? the Microsoft Reactor. Microsoft Reactor is a community hub for developers. OK, and all the response, as you can see here. And we can have uh, all of this interaction. So what happens if we want to a specific 
really specific context, we can go to this part and personalize uh, this interaction. For example, uh, imagine that we want to, to learn more about Azure resources. And we can have a prompt, something like this. Hey, you are an assistant that knows about Azure resources and who only answers if the resource name is of type platform as a service or infrastructure as a service. This could be an example. And in this case, like another scenarios, uh, we need to provide uh, the context. In this case, we can add examples to have or provide uh, the, more, the most context as possible uh, to have uh, the better interaction here. So for example, the, the user can say something like, hey, Azure App Service. And the assistant will say, the, or, or will respond, ah, this resource is platform as a service. We can add another example here to say um, Azure SQL database, for example. And add this other example. We can add another one, for example, if we say Azure Virtual Machines. And the result here will be infrastructure as a service. Okay. This is a good context for this particular example. Here we can save the changes. Okay. And I start the chat again. As you can see here, new chat session started. Okay. We can start again saying, for example, hello. Hello, how can I help you with your with Azure resources? Please mention a resource name or related to a platform as a service or an infrastructure as a service. Okay. Get started, for example, Azure App Service. Service. Platform as a service, for example, Azure Cosmos DB. Platform as a service, another example. Uh, this of Azure in this human like interaction in a general way, this of Azure infrastructure as a service. And this is one scenario that, it, what, that we can contemplate. What happens if we say a resource that is not a uh, platform as a service or an infrastructure as a service? For example, if we say something like mm, Azure. Active Directory. I'm sorry, but Azure Active Directory is, not as, is a software as a service. And I'm only, okay. It's a good uh, content generated because this particular resource is not infrastructure as a service or platform as a service in this particular context. And this is, yeah. Yeah, in this case, we can say that even though, let's say, we added context or you added context to, okay, mm -hmm. uh, answer with platform as a service or infrastructure as a service, it will still, let's say, know or have, uh, let's say, some kind of knowledge uh, that mm -hmm. there are some things which don't fit in this, let's say, in either of these uh, categories. So it will actually tell you. Okay, neither of those, it is actually this one. Uh, this adds a bit of complexity in our responses, let's say, because in our program, in some c -sharp application or Python application, we expect just one word or something. We can still get uh, more information, which is not false. Actually, it is like true because, okay, it is uh, software as a service, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can, let's say, uh, expect that. This differs yeah. from, let's say, machine learning typical application where, okay, uh, we train some model to distinguish between cats and uh, dogs. Okay, so the answer will always be a cat and dog uh, because, uh, yeah, you provide some photo and, okay, it will fit between these categories. If you provide, let's say, a picture of me, 
it will still say, okay, maybe this is a dog, but of course the uh, probability percentage will be low in both cases, or it will be like towards uh, some of them, but one of the of, of these two, uh, because we did not train the model uh, to distinguish between something that is not uh, a cat or a dog. Of course, uh, we can improve our models uh, by saying, okay, this is cat, this is dog, and this is none of, of this. And of course, we provide examples of uh, things that are not cats, are not dogs. Uh, generative AI models already are like trained for this, or they already know, okay, this does not, uh, this is not um, platform as a service or software as a service. It is something else, or sorry, infrastructure as a service. It is something else, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's interesting because uh, we can have uh, another interaction, another exchange of the interaction. For example, we ask something like, hey, change the conversation to Spanish, for example. Ah, I wrote that wrong. <laughs> okay. And we will have this interaction here in this other language. Uh, this is important or, or interesting to mention, but okay, that is in a general way. So there are other options that we can consider here as well. For example, create, uh, clear the chat or view the code. This is an important thing because for this specific context, for example, if we have a, uh, a .NET application, in this case with C Sharp, uh, we can have that interaction in our application in, in our applications. So, for example, in this case, we need to send uh, the endpoint and the uh, and the key and the deployment model name and have all the code that we need to use in our application with this particular endpoint and key. Also, we can consider this option to deploy this model in a web app to have that interaction in a web application. So uh, we will see probably in a future sessions how to call this type of models in, in our .NET applications. But as a preview, <laughs> I'm going to share here um, a general preview to have that interaction with our applications in .NET. Enter screen. Okay, probably you are saying right now my Visual Studio window, right? Yep. Not yet. <laughs> Okay, the general idea, it will appear here in a moment, um, but we will see the interaction uh, with our models in this particular case with GPT-4 to call uh, the model in our .NET application. So the thing here is uh, we will have a console application to enter, for example, the questions and get the results. And here we need to consider uh, three type of roles. For example, in this case, the first thing, system, to have like the prompt, and then have the examples to provide more context. In this case, for example, to have the user, the user says something like Azure App Service, and the assistant uh, response, platform as a service. Uh, this will be the three types of roles in our interaction. And also in the applications. Yes, now we can see. Thank you, Alexia. Now we can see. Thank you. Uh, here, uh, okay, we need to send the key, the endpoint, the deployment name. These informations uh, are in the resource, in the general resource, and also in the Azure AI Service Studio to get the deployment or model name. 
Then we need to call like a like a API in this case, in this particular case with the Azure.ai.openAI and Nugget package. Uh, we can call uh, a client API for then uh, set up our specific context. In this case, remember our types of roles. In this case, chat role to, to have the prompt here, the user example, the assistant example response, and these particular examples. Then we can send here the general uh, parameters, for example, the temperature, max tokens, and the other ones. And then this is just a, a console application to have this, this interaction. So the idea is get the questions from the user and then call the API and show the result. I'm going to run this example. And in just in a few seconds, we will see. The application. Maybe you can press a key because sometimes when you run a console application, uh, like uh, I should open AI for, for Azure resource context. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yep. We have the example here and if we say the same the same example that we see before, Azure App Service. Platform as a service. Okay. If I say something in Spanish, this cost the Azure, Azure Disk for the virtual machines. Infrastructure as a service. And that's the interaction that we can have. Yeah, this is like a hello world application in .NET with to interact with generative AI models. So that that's it uh, that we can consider here, and that's all the things that we consider in a general way to the Azure Open AI service in the portal. One another another option that we can consider here is add our own data, as you can see here. We will have a specific session in no run to have uh, to, to see all this process. But in a general way, we can consider here some sources, for example, have information specific in the Azure Community Search, or we or we have uh, files, we can put them on the Azure Web Storage or upload the files directly from here. But also we will need um, an Azure Web Storage resource to have the files there and also an Azure Community Search to get the information. So we can upload the files here and interact with our oral contact. For example, if we have documents about requirements for our systems, then we can have like interaction to say, hey, what is the requirement to, to work in this particular component in our development process or uh, other uh, scenarios that we can contemplate to interact with our own data. So that's it in this way, the Azure OpenAI in action section. Okay, to end, an, imp an important thing to mention here is the responsive AI. Yep, we're interacting with models, sending data and interacting with the data. And here is important to consider the Microsoft Responsible AI principles because here we will have like um, fields to say, hey, we need an environment to, to have privacy with our data, inclusions with the, with the data, the way that we interact with them, the responsibility, the transparency of the interaction or the way that we use these generative AI models or artificial intelligence in Azure in a general way. And this is important to consider. And one important question to mention here is, okay, if the client say, um, how can I be sure that our own data will be safe in, in this type of resources? It's important to mention that all this data will be stored and encrypted in your Azure subscription. Um, 
this will not be this won't be used to to retrain the foundational uh, base models because all, all will be your data in in the way your data is your data and will be encrypted in your subscription and of course as a cloud computer uh, or cloud computing in this case uh, environment Azure has to to achieve for meet some standards um, and security and compliance controls so it will be safe in this case to encrypt and uh, store our, our data here so yeah that's an important thing to mention and to infinite infinite and beyond we have several resources of interest and one important thing uh, or, or the best thing is microsoft learn in this case to keep uh, learning in this world about generative ai with azure open ai service probably in the chat you will have the link to have all the related resources to to this particular uh, training so also we have a repo to get this example for example uh, to to interact with the azure uh, resources example and uh, that's it the you can begin now the recommended thing is okay create your azure subscription if you don't have one and then get formalized with the Azure OpenAI page, then we can uh, require access to the Azure OpenAI service and start interacting with the Azure uh, Studio, the Azure OpenAI Studio, and call the, the, the models in your applications. So this is an, as, a, as a general way. Yep. Um, now we can have the questions, comments. If you have new ideas, we can interact now. OK, Daniel, thank you very mm -hmm. much for this awesome presentation. There are a lot of questions. And yeah, I think oh, we have nice. enough time. Yes, so thank you very much yeah. to, to the <laughs> chat, to, to the people, because they were very active. And some of the questions have already been answered. But yeah, uh, you, I will also like say like you uh, would like your uh, answer or your comment uh, from this. Okay, so we can start with our first question from Coding Success uh, 100. What is an MVP for Microsoft? Wow, good question. What is an MVP for Microsoft? Uh, for Microsoft, the MVPs are the most valuable professionals for a specific uh, technology categories. Uh, for example, AI, developer technologies, Microsoft Azure, uh, cloud data center management, and many, many categories with the Microsoft products. But for us, it's like um, uh, a lifestyle, right? Like uh, <laughs> we know always yeah, we... with the community. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do what we like, right? Uh, to share yeah. content, uh, to uh, learn about this new technology and of course uh, talk about it let's say with 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 the community uh, answer questions yeah there are different ways to to become an, an mvp yeah okay thank you That's thank you Daniel. Low, okay, so of that law for the community <laughs> yes exactly exactly mm -hmm. exactly and of course uh, let's say for free right like we don't uh, get paid okay mm -hmm. So next question, well, there are two questions from uh, Gigal B. Uh, first question, can you tell if these AI services are free for personal makers? In the well, Azure AI services, there are free resources uh, with that option. And when you create a new resource, you have uh, pricing tires and many resources have that, hey, free tire for example mm -hmm. custom vision computer vision and many many Big services uh, yes. azure ai services but for the open azure open ai service uh, mm -hmm. right now we just have the standard price 
-huh. It's important yes, to mention true. that. Yes, yes, there is no free tire yet for uh, mm -hmm. Azure OpenAI, maybe in the future. But yeah, the other cognitive services, they do have free tire. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And second one, is there a way to work offline when internet is disconnected after building the application? This is sometimes important for embedded solutions. I know that we can do that with another resources, uh, with Docker containers, but I'm not sure if we already have that option for the Azure OpenAI service. Uh, do you yet. know something? Not yet. Yeah, not, not yet. Yeah, yeah. I uh, also explore or uh, I was also asked about this. Unfortunately, for Azure Open AI, let's say services, you will always need uh, an active uh, internet uh, connection. We do understand that it is important that uh, sometimes for data compliance, for data privacy, or uh, some scenarios where the internet connection is not stable, you would like uh, this, uh, let's say, powerful um, generative uh, solutions to work, but unfortunately, uh, no, it is not possible uh, as of now to to consume to 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 get access of, of, to to these uh, models AI generative models uh, in offline or disconnected mode. So yeah, unfortunately not now, but maybe in the future. Yeah, probably in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So next uh, question or actually comment from uh, Fisher when you were talking about the. A form to request access from Azure OpenAI. It says that form, uh, this is important, yeah, requires you to register with a non personal email, actually, a company with an enterprise Azure account. Uh, so if you uh, register or request access with a personal account, like Gmail account, Hotmail account, uh, you will uh, be uh, rejected most probably. So try to use. Uh, a company uh, subscription, uh, which is also tied to an Azure uh, account. So thank you very much for that uh, recommendation. Yeah, it is it is important. Okay, uh, next uh, question from MVHO Mahase. So sorry. Uh, any advice on how to get around the max token if a person wants to summarize a large amount of text? without losing the core ideas using GPT 3.5, because as you know, uh, GPT models have some uh, limitation. Mm, maybe one way would be to uh, split like uh, your request to provide, let's say, um, partial information in, in different uh, requests. As you know, these GPT models are context aware, so they will always, let's say, be on some conversation, uh, let's say programmatically, you can provide some ID so they can continue the previous conversation. Uh, so you can like say, okay, this is the first part of uh, this, uh, let's say, um, uh, document. This is part two uh, and so on. If you know that your uh, request will be quite uh, long, so you can, uh, split it. Let's let's say, for example, you have a, a document, uh, 50 pages, let's say you have a lot of text, so you don't provide uh, all, or submit all these uh, 50 pages uh, in one request. You need to split it so you can like provide uh, one page per uh, request. And as I said, you uh, specify that it is still part of the same conversation and yeah, it will uh, help you with that. Okay. Okay. A any comments or what do you think about it? Yeah, that, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. That we can consider. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so next question from Christopher Richard. Is Microsoft's usage trial layer more robust than, say, OpenAI's open API access? So what do you think about the difference between the OpenAI APIs and Azure, uh, sorry, Microsoft? Uh, OpenAI, do you think that there is a difference? At the end, it will be the same, in my opinion. Because if you use, for example, the OpenAI, just the OpenAI APIs, if I'm not wrong, you can also call uh, Azure OpenAI service models as well. 
Yes, there, there, mm -hmm. there are, let's say, actually two, two things. First of all, is that mm -hmm. you can integrate, and actually I was going to ask you that, but yeah, you can integrate uh, different services, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, like cognitive services, or as you also mentioned in the last part, uh, maybe blob storage, where you can uh, get the data from, uh, or even cognitive, sorry, Azure search to add more power to the open AI, let's say, uh, responses. But one, also one key difference is, uh, and you also mentioned it, uh, Microsoft provides uh, infrastructure for uh, security, for data privacy, for all these, uh, let's say, uh, data protection layers. So this would be one difference between the base uh, APIs from Azure, oh, uh, sorry, from OpenAI, right? Uh, and Microsoft. Of course, the result will be similar. Let's say if we strictly talk uh, about the uh, sending a request or getting a response, yes, they, they provide the same uh, capabilities like uh, GPT models, uh, train your own model, and so on. But if we go a bit uh, deeper uh, about the uh, infrastructure, communication, um, uh, security, and your own data, of course, Microsoft already has this uh, 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 security, uh, data compliance, and all the things that uh, Daniel mentioned uh, when talking about uh, responsible AI and your own data. Let's say that would be uh, the difference if we go a bit uh, deeper about uh, infrastructure. But results, the same, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question from our friend, uh, Brian Oroxon. What is the cost of use of open AI? Okay, so yeah, Daniel, maybe use one more comment that you want to say about it. Yeah, in this case, we can see the documentation. It will be depends, for example, if we work with GPT, uh, it will be depend of the number of tokens. Yes. And in the case of the images with DALI, uh, for example, two dollars per uh, one hundred images. Yes. So it also depends mm -hmm. on if you want to generate calls, text, uh, images, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. yeah, when you create the new resource, you can see uh, the documentation about that or in the calculator directly. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, next question from uh, James. Uh, how does Microsoft expect us to learn and play with AI if we need to justify usage every time? Can we just say learning? It's about requesting access that we need to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can be at the beginning because at the beginning, were many, many, many requirements to this uh, resource as a, as a preview. But yeah, I think like a new resource, always we need to try and improve the resource. And after that, probably we won't need the to fill the requirement form to access to the resource, right? Yeah, in the end, well, mm -hmm. th there is, of course, the Microsoft Learn modules where you can uh, see how, how it works. Uh, but yeah, for the moment, and as, as we mentioned, to, let's say, uh, be uh, or respect some of the responsible AI principles, uh, yeah, this uh, request, this access request should be, is gated, let's say, at least for, for using this, this form. Uh, but yeah, as Daniel mentioned, only once, then you can use it. Of course, for the uh, things that you mentioned during the request, right? But yeah, uh, let's say as of now, this is the situation, but maybe later it can uh, mm -hmm. be even more open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next question from Carlos Armando uh, Is Azure Open AI resources available in all Azure regions? Not yet, but we already have many regions available of the resource. I remember uh, when the resource were, it was new and we just have like one or one two or regions. Three. But yeah. right now we have in the Americas region, Europe, 
Japan as well. We have yes, it is. many regions available right now. Yes. It is becoming available in more and more regions. So mm -hmm. maybe soon it will be available uh, all all regions. Thank you. Uh, next question from Raes Giliani. Will the version of GPT that is able to browse the web make it to Azure OpenAI Studio? To Probably yes. The web. Mm -hmm. Yes, because right now you can um, like also, I mean, it, it is also po now possible in ChatGPT to uh, answer questions uh, from internet. Uh, so probably yes, because uh, the well, let's say versions, um, yeah, are quite similar, mm -hmm. or they co offer the same functionality um, after uh, some mm -hmm. some time. So most probably yes. Yeah. Vink uh, already that oh, uh, of course. Oh. does, but yeah, probably for this one as well. Mm -hmm. For but because that too. that's the future. Get more mm -hmm. information. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, next question from James. Are these benefits of using GPT in Azure and not outside Azure and use, use ChatGPT installed on your machine instead? Is this leveraging ChatGPT behind the scenes? Yeah, as we mentioned, it is the same or they use the same models. So you might get similar responses. The added benefit from using Microsoft uh, Azure uh, solution is uh, the infrastructure data privacy that we mentioned earlier. But yeah, uh, behind the scenes, they are using the same uh, model. So of course, they, they do not offer different like capabilities or something. Mm -hmm. And I think it is uh, related uh, uh, with John's question. Uh, is it simply a thin layer over chat GPT that does not add any value? As we mentioned, the added mm -hmm. value is the security, data privacy, and so mm -hmm. um, Okay, Carlos Armando's next question. Does this research allow us to configure virtual machine types for deployment, or can we not touch these configurations? Mm. Probably not yet, but... Uh, we already have an integration with the Azure App Service to deploy uh, these models in that resource. But probably in the future, we will have that because uh, we use that. Also, other integra integrations like uh, an Azure Bot Service and other resources, oh. because impor okay. it's important to, to have that integrations. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Uh, next question, writing your own Python apps and using OpenAI API key and more. Yes, you can uh, do that with the, uh, let's say when, when you get the code from uh, mm -hmm. OpenAI Studio, yes, you can write, uh, actually not only in Python or C Sharp, you can use any other language, PHP, if you want, yeah. for example. In a general way, just the endpoint, the key, uh, the region, and the mm -hmm. model name. Yes, you can do mm -hmm. uh, send a request, uh, yes. But the advantage of Python and C Sharp is that there are already libraries to simplify uh, sending requests, consuming the service and so on, okay? Uh, next question, Rocky XY Sable. Uh, can OpenAI provide answers like GitHub Copilot? Hmm. You can definitely generate code, but it will be interesting to compare both services. What does Copilot says? What does OpenAI say? Right? Yeah, because GitHub Copilot analyze or GitHub Copilot chat, for example, analyze your specific context in your applications and provides information from the <laughs> from your specific application, right? So it depends in this case in Azure OpenAI in the chat, chat playground, the interaction that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Alan, every, uh, can you provide feedback to the model on accuracy happiness? For example, the first picture of lovely Mexico wasn't as nice as the second. Yes, you can always uh, say, yeah, this uh, picture was not what I was uh, expecting. Yes. 
as you can you can provide if it was good or or not at all yes you can even do that in the being generator if i uh, remember correctly okay uh, well uh, i think we are uh, almost out of time but you can reach to us in our social media actually we have it uh, here in our um uh, uh, you can see it on, on the screen so feel free to to reach out feel free to send us a message thank you very much for your time there were a lot of questions and we tried to <laughs> answer all of them but uh, yeah we we appreciate your your participation i think it was uh, really 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 nice so um uh, feel free also to to join us next week uh, for the next uh, session in in this series so uh thank you very much uh, daniel yeah, thank you very much, everyone, to be here today. Wow, it's amazing to see all of you here learn about this amazing world about generative AI. And yeah, if you have questions, comments, more ideas, you can contact us, and we will be happy to, to have this interaction because at the end, this is the community. Yes. Learn, share, and connect between each other. So thank you very much, and see you in the future again. See you next time. Thank you.